Hey everyone, uh, this is Kenji. It's a little late at night, but I'm going to make breakfast for tomorrow. Um, I have these Yukon Gold. You've probably seen these Yukon Gold potatoes sitting on my uh, counter for the last few weeks. Um, they're starting to get a little bit soft and we're actually starting to sprout a little, so I'm going to use them tonight. Um, I'm probably going to have to peel off more than I really want to of these because they're, you know, they've been exposed to the sun, so they're starting to get a little bit greenish. Um, and you want to get rid of that green bit because it's poisonous. Um, but what we're going to make is a uh, Spanish style tortilla. So that's, you know, like the uh, potato, onion, and egg omelet. Um, I learned this technique um, when I was uh, working in Boston, when I worked uh, with Ken Oranger at, at uh, Toro. We would make uh, like a half dozen of these per night, um, very big ones in like a 14 inch nonstick non skillet um, and serve them room temperature, which is, I think, the best way to eat them. Um, in Spain, like at a tapas bar, you might find them uh, in a bocadillo, like in a sandwich. Um, <clears throat> but I think they're great cold uh, served, not cold, uh, room temperature. And so they're perfect for making the night before so that you can eat them at room temperature the next morning. Um, I'm gonna start by heating up a good, 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 good amount of nice olive oil. So this is one of those situations where, I mean, you might have just seen, if you're on watching my channel, and you've probably seen Adam Ragusi's channel, um, where he just came out with a video talking about frying in olive oil. Um, there's a couple things I think he missed in that video. One of them is that, well, first of all, I've never thought about the health aspect of it per se, but the main reason I don't always fry in olive oil is because I don't always want olive oil flavor. Um, and olive oil flavor is pretty distinct, even when, even when you cook it um, and a lot of that flavor dissipates, you're still gonna taste it. Um, so it doesn't always work in every dish. Um, the other thing I think he missed was that, um, well, he did his taste test, um, but he only did it by himself. Um, you know, you can't blame him given the current situation, but he only did it by himself. Um, and I think if he had done it with a larger panel of tasters, he would have found that most people do find, um, especially the like the really nice uh, extra versions that ha already have a lot of those sort of bitter um, flavors, bitter spicy flavors to begin with, um, they do acquire a more acute bitterness um, as they cook, and that can sometimes be unpleasant. Not all olive oils do it, but um, some of them do. At least that's what I found in my taste tests, which happen to be... Oh, actually, I don't know if I've done any double blind, but I've certainly done blind taste tests um, with panels of people. All right, so we're just slicing up those potatoes, um, quarter inch slices. Uh, you see my, I'm in the middle of repairing my, repairing my uh, cabinet doors. Oh, by the way, check this out. Like that. No more. I don't even know where Spoonie went, but no more Spoon. The cabinet's just closed by itself now. <clears throat> All right, so we got our potatoes here. Good amount of olive oil. Um, this is probably actually more potato than I'll need, so I'll, whatever I don't use, I'll save. Um, I'd like to drop them in the oil like a few bits at a time just so that the oil gets in between them and they don't stick to each other. Because I hate it when, when you're trying to like slice and fry potatoes um, and they kind of end up stacked together and sandwiched, you know? Um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna do this the easier way. Where's my towel? I'm gonna do it the, this way. this away you can also actually um, microwave the potatoes um, to pre-cook them the texture doesn't come out quite the same in the finished dish because you so you'll see when we when we cook these potatoes you kind of fry them until they get like a mini sort of like a little bit of a shell um, so similar to if you've ever made double cooked french fries you know traditional french fries um, similar to that and similar to the first fry in that where they're not crispy per se but they do get a kind of light golden um, crust on the outside All right, so we're gonna How much potato? That's that's a reasonable amount of potato. What you want in this dish is a reasonable amount of potato and an unreasonable amount of olive oil. It should be really like way more olive oil than you think it's supposed to be. Because that's kind of the magic of this dish and what gives the eggs their flavor. Um, if you're not familiar with it is so, so I mean, you know, you'll see, it'll be like a kind of thick omelet um, made of potatoes and onions. Uh, and eggs. 
I had this kind of half onion hanging out. Ooh, not looking great, but we'll see how, see how he looks when we peel him. Turn him down a little. I think he'll be just fine. Let's peel off some of those outer layers. Uh, maybe not too just fine. I'd say from here on in, we're good. Um, and here's this other well, half onion that my, so my wife likes to cut onions, um, split them first before she cuts them orbitally as opposed to pole to pole, which um, I find, well, I find difficult to, to, to use onions that way, um, but you know, she, I know better than to try and correct her um, when it comes to cooking things, because she, she likes to do it the way she does it, and she cooks good food, so I don't complain. Actually, I don't complain because I used to complain and I learned not to. That's the reason I don't complain. I'm not going to go too fast because I don't want to wake everyone up. This knife, um, I just bought it yesterday um, from a local knife shop called The Perfect Edge. It's it's, um, it's my first Shun knife, actually. I've never owned a Shun before. Um, for some, they've always felt a little kind of overpriced to me for what they are. Um, but uh, this knife was 50% off, um, so it seemed like too good a deal to pass up. Um, I, never really, I don't really own any knives like this. This one is um, a dual steel Damascus, um, where both layers of steel come all the way to the edge. Um, and so the idea, I guess, is that um, two different hardnesses, um, and as you grind it down, it creates these kind of micro serrations. Um, I don't know if you can kind of see them there, but it, it, um, it creates these micro serrations naturally as you sharpen the knife. Um, so it has some of the benefits of a serrated knife, which is that it, you know, it slices into things a little more easily than a, uh, than a perfectly straight knife. Um, but you don't, you know, unlike a serrated, unlike a true serrated knife, which you can't really sharpen all that easily, you can sharpen this one just like a regular knife. Um, I think that's part of the idea. Um, a knife expert, expert could tell you more. So if I was going to make this dish um, just to eat it by myself tonight, um, I would do it the quick and easy, super, super quick and easy way, which is to, um, it's, a it's a trick that um, Jose Andres uh, uses in his book where you make it out of potato chips. So like literally you take a bag of potato chips, open it up, um, fry some onions in olive oil, take your potato chips, um, open up the bag, and then... Uh, Combine the onions, olive oil, and potato chips with your egg mixture, um, and then fry it in a skillet, and that's that's that. Um, actually, you know, what? <laughs> instead of fresh onions, I wonder if it would work with funyuns. If given you're already using potato chips, I wonder if funyuns would work. Um, in fact, I'm going to try that. I promise I'll put the video up sometime. Salt and vinegar chips um, is what I what I use when I'm. Well, what I use when I'm, when I'm eating potato chips and also what I use when I'm uh, cooking a dish like this. The quick and easy Spanish tortilla. Typically you would see this dish served with um, alioli, which is a garlic and olive oil sauce um, made in the mortar and pestle, which I'll make another batch of, but I actually had this batch that I made that, unfortunately, when you put olive oil, when you put, put alioli in the... Um, in the fridge, the uh, the olive oil breaks out because the fat crystals are too large, um, because it crystallizes, um, and that breaks the emulsion. Um, but this was at one point an alioli that I made in the mortar and pestle, so nothing but garlic, garlic, well now it's seasoned, black pepper and salt, um, and olive oil. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna snap my fingers and speed this up. Um, the next time you see me, I will have, um, the potatoes will have been cooked just to the point where they're Starting mostly softening and just starting to get like a little crust to them. Ready? Um, so I also just realized I cut way too many onions there. <clears throat> I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I'm used to making much bigger batches of this stuff. Um, but there's there's enough space in that skillet that I think I can slide whatever onions I need in there. 
um, and then just save the rest for, I'll make something with them tomorrow. Oh, you know what I'll make tomorrow? I'll make, um, for lunch, I will make gyudon. By the way, just to annoy people, I'm gonna eat with that spoon later. Um, because I know exactly how clean my sinks are because I just disinfected them. Um, to people who complain about me using utensils from places I sh they shouldn't have been used, um, first of all, my house, my rules. Um, more importantly, like you have no clue how I maintain my kitchen. You don't know whether my clean is sink or not. My clean is sink or not, my sink is clean or not. I don't even know whether my sink is clean or not. Who are you to tell me? <laughs> All right, we're gonna now break some eggs. This one looks like a job for four eggs. I'll say four eggs, that's what I'll say. It's probably overkill. Probably gonna regret that last egg. You always regret the last egg, right? Season it, salt, good pinch of pepper. Is there such thing as a bad, uh, sorry, good, good pinch of kosher salt? Um, is there such thing as a bad pinch of kosher salt? Oh, here's my favorite whisk. It's a nice little whippy guy. An oxo. Look at how easily that whisks. So the trick here, the trick I found to getting really nice texture on this thing, um, is that you take your hot potato, onion, and oil mixture, and dump it straight into your eggs. Um, we want to make sure those potatoes are cooked through, by the way. Doesn't matter if they're breaking up at all. It makes zero difference. There you go. You dump it straight into your eggs. Almost done. A couple of slightly hard pieces. Um, and the act of dumping it in there starts them cooking a little bit so that when you get it back in the pan, um, you don't really have to kind of do that thing which you normally do wear an omelet where you kind of have to scramble it around so that the outside doesn't um, overcook before the inside's done because it's kind of all cooking. Um, relatively fast um, and so uh, your eggs brown on the outside and are nice and custardy on the inside without really having to worry about it too much it just, just kind of happens uh, there's just ever so slightly too much oil in here i think i'm just worried that i'm going to overfill the plant pan overflow the pan so i'm going to dump out a little bit but i think there's probably about i don't know a third of a cup of oil in here at least maybe a half cup Onions are soft, potatoes, can you see them? So you can see how they're, um, how the potatoes are just starting to get that little golden crust on them. I don't know if you can see that, but I can see it. I'm hoping you can see it too. All right, so now we, here's what we do. We just go dump, make sure there's nothing sticking to the bottom of that pan. Because if something's sticking now, then the eggs are gonna stick when they go back in. Heat it up, add a little bit of the oil back. All right, now we're gonna fold this mixture. Oh yeah, I can already tell there's slightly too much egg. So this, I did the same damn thing with my carbonara the other day, huh? I can just call this show Kenji with too many eggs. All right. Not quite hot enough yet. I want the egg to really kind of sizzle as it hits there. Um, so this is not, 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 not a delicate French omelet. Um, this is a hearty, browned Spanish omelet. I'm gonna taste it. Yeah, seasoning is good. If you want, you could also add a little butter in here. If you like that butter flavor. Okay. There you go. So it sizzles as soon as it as soon as it hits the pan. And 
you see how it kind of bubbles up around the edges like that? That's exactly what you're looking for. That's a sign that um, it's bubbling up and it hopefully means that it's not going to stick. It never really works, you know, of course, especially because it's on video. Um, I don't know if I will have posted my pizza video um, yet by the time you watch this one, but if you've seen my pizza video, you know that things never work out how they're supposed to work when you're doing a, when you're shooting a video. Oh, here's a trick. Um, so some people invert it. All right, so some people, first of all, they finish the finish this in the oven, um, and that is totally fine to do. You can you can pop it in an oven um, and let it cook so that it cooks on the top and the bottom. Um, the issue I find is when you do that. Um, you don't really get like the sort of dense custardy texture that um, that well the, that I like. Um, you get sort of a more kind of poofy frittata like texture. Um, so some people, when they flip, what they'll do is they'll put a plate over the top, flip it over, and then slide it back in. What I find easiest to do is actually use a, a pot lid like this because it has no rim at all. Um, so first of all, you put it here and let it um, let it sit there for a second just so that the uh, the top of this thing start to cook. Let me just, I'm just going to poke it a teeny bit to see how how firm we're getting. Okay, so we're still way too wet, but that's okay. We'll get there. All right. I'm going to pop the heat, heat down just a tiny bit to make sure that uh, we're not going to burn that outside before the top is done. Um, so this top there will help the top start, the top of the uh, uh, of the omelette start to, uh, the tortilla, sorry, the top of the tortilla start to set a little bit um, so that it becomes easier to flip. Um, what we used at, at Clio, um, which if I was a baker I would have here because I thought it was brilliant, um, was a the turntable from a cake decorating stand, um, which is a flat metal disc with a, um, a metal spindle sticking down um, underneath it. Um, and so you, you know, cake makers use it by placing it on the base and then you, you sort of rotate the cake, it allows you to rotate the cake around evenly so that you can apply a nice layer of frosting or do nice decorations, etc. Um, the way it works with the Spanish tortilla is that you can put it upside down if it's right over the top of the thing and then you flip it and then you slide it back in the pan and because it has no, it's completely flat and no lip at all, um, it makes that action really, really easy. Um, and the other trick I learned, which I'll, I'll show you in a second, um, is that you you flip it a few times, um, not just once. You flip it over and over and over, um, especially right before the end, because that helps kind of shape it, and it makes the uh, um, it makes it sort of it gives you that sort of really nice, perfectly round um, those round edges, which is uh, what you're looking for, or what I'm looking for again. All right, so we're looking good now. I give it a little. Where's my thin spatula? So you want to take one of these guys. You can also just use a knife, um, like a butter knife. Want to make sure that your edges are are free. All right, this is looking great. Now, I take a second cloth. This is a two cloth job because the pot handle can get hot. <clears throat> I'm gonna go over the sink here just in case. And you ready? Now we do a little bit of this. Whoop. And we slide it right back in. There we go. We lost, oh, we lost a tiny bit. That's all right. And so now we put it back over the heat. We kind of tuck these edges in. And don't worry too much if like, so right now you can see this side's kind of flared out. You don't really have to worry about that too much. Um, it's all, it's all gonna work out in the end, I promise. And if you see that um, it's kind of like, you see how this one's kind of foaming around the edges? That's a sign that you have the right amount of olive oil in there. You want the olive oil to like, you want the, the thing to be basically saturated with olive oil, like holding just enough oil that, holding so much oil that just a tiny bit is starting to seep out around the edges and bubble like that. Um, that's a sign that you have the right amount. If it's too little olive oil, it'll look dry. If it's too much olive oil, it'll kind of look like it's swimming. Um, but just a little bubble like that is what you're after. Um, yeah. You know what? I got this spoon rest here. I might as well use it, right? All right. So the second side usually doesn't take as long. Now here's where things get fun. We're gonna um, 
get this pot lid back and now we're gonna here's where the shaping bit comes um, I'm not gonna bother using the second towel because it doesn't feel hot so over and in and over and in and that kind of ends up sort of tucking in those edges you see how it's getting more and more round and nice over and in. all right we will uh that final side is not quite brown enough yet um by the way you can you can add all kinds of mixins mixins to this if you can mix in with your fixin that I'm thinking of trying to think of a pun and coming up blank anyhow. Um, someone give me a good mix-in pun in the comments. Um, you can add all kinds of mix-ins to this. Um, so uh, very traditional would be something like peas and um, roasted peppers, roasted red red peppers or, or even raw red peppers. Um, or say you could add some like chorizo, that's delicious. Um, and, and really honestly, it's like a frittata, like any, any kind of vegetable that you want to throw in here. Um, is gonna work. It's spring right now, so um, if you wanted to do like peas and fava beans and asparagus, that would be delicious. Green onions. Um, oh, and by the way, you're looking for a texture that's kind of feels good. Um, a texture that's kind of still just a little bit wet on the inside. Um, you know, this isn't this isn't like um, this isn't one of those sort of the wetter the better situations, but it certainly is like moderately wet is better better than dry that looks gorgeous to me i think i'm going to call that i think i'm going to call that done all right we're calling it so to serve it flip it out slide it onto your board and that is that so now i'm going to resist the temptation no i'm not i'm just going to cut a little bit out um, and then I'm going to resist the temptation to eat the rest because I think it's better the next morning at room temperature. Oh, there you go. So, so you see that? So you see how just sort of like a, sort of like a good French omelet. It's, can you see that? It's not like wet inside, but it's like, uh, moist and very sort of like custardy almost. Um, and that is... That is what you want. That is what I want. Anyhow, okay. Um, I'm going to put away. I'm going to clean up. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to wake up in the morning with my daughter. Um, actually, I'll probably wake up before her because I got a food delivery at 6.30 a.m. Um, and uh, you know what I'm going to do in the morning? I'm going to make a real quick, cheaty alioli. So it's basically, um, well, you'll see it in the morning. All right? Good night. Hey, everyone. So it's morning. Um, and... This is ready to eat. Oh, um, so for the, the sauce, I'm making like a super quick, oops, sort of cheaty um, alioli. So typically this would be made with garlic and olive oil, um, sometimes an egg yolk. Um, it's still considered alioli if it, even if it has an egg yolk. Um, so, but I'm just gonna make it with uh, regular store-bought mayo and some of this broken um, alioli that I had from the fridge. If you don't have broken up alioli in your fridge, you can just take regular olive oil, I'm sorry, regular mayo and whisk in um, some minced garlic and some fresh olive oil. Um, if you got a little bit of fresh lemon juice, that's also great in there. All right. Oh, it looks like someone stole a second bite, I swear. I swear it wasn't me. I'm gonna cut these into little cubes. Oops, wrong sponge. Um, I like cutting it into cubes because and you can eat a reasonable number of them and then they come out easier than wedges. And also this way I can, my daughter gets a choice of whether she has triangles or squares. I'm just gonna try this teeny tiny triangle right now because I don't wanna eat too much before the family wakes up. Oh, so let's take a look at that internal texture there. It's a nice, tender, moist. The potatoes are fully cooked, little bits of onion. It's delicious.
<clears throat> I'm sorry, I forgot to stand in front of the door while I do this. Yes, Shabba, you get your little bit. Sit. 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 <laughs> Shabba, sit. Good girl. There you go. Alright, let's do one more little bite for me. Alright, I'm gonna go wake up my daughter. All right.